What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Hex Phenom Games Cast, the show that brings you the video game news you need to know each and every week. It goes live every Saturday on youtube.com slash hexphenom and on podcast services around the globe, places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, really any podcast service of your choosing. I'm one of your hosts, Joshua Wojcik, a.k.a. Hex Phenom, and I am joined by the abstract rocker, GP. GP, how you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, man. How's it going for you? I'm doing pretty good as well. Just to, by the way, before we get any further into the show, I just want to apologize if you guys could hear the my air conditioner going in the background. It's it's starting to get it's starting to get a little hot outside. So, and then it'll be back to forty degrees in like two days. But for the time being, the air conditioner is on. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to put my AC in. Honestly, I really cannot wait. <laughs> Yeah, here in here in PA, I mean it. PA weather is always weird, especially in like the the April May months. But like, I feel like this year it's been crazy, like back and forth more than I can remember in a while. Where it's been like, there'll be two days where it's seventy degrees, and then it's forty and fifty for the rest of the week, and then it'll be sixty again for a day, and then back to forty and fifty, and then there's and then one day it'll randomly snow like five inches, and then it'll be sixty degrees the next day, and it's like. Yeah. Oh my god. If you have some serious sinuses like I do, uh yeah, your sinuses definitely oh god, your sinuses feel it, man. That that that's that's a very good explanation, really it is. Yeah. It's crazy, man. But GP, what have you been playing recently? You know, I've been playing a lot of Far Cry six. I know in the other podcast I said I was making progress and uh I yeah. broke I broke through the other side and I I beat the campaign. I did basically like 85% of the missions in the game. I think nice, I nice. I was, I have some yarn stories. I have some treasure hunts and uh, that that's it. And after that, I can probably hunt for crates if I really want to, but yeah, I made, I've been making a lot of progress on that. Um, I was, I was sick the past like two days or so, but I uh, binged a lot of stuff in that case. And really I and zombie army four and a return to cold war. Because, man, Cold War was the shit. <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to say before we uh, before we started the podcast, I'm interested to see, like, they're, they're teasing, um, like, apparently there's going to be, like, permanent rewards that you get for completing yeah. that super Easter egg. I'm mm -hmm. interested to see what those rewards are, and I feel like if they're worth it, <laughs> I might actually be convinced to go back and try to do all the other Easter eggs and then do the super Easter egg. But I don't know. We'll see about that, but... If you I'm definitely to, interested. I'm definitely down if you ever want to do it because I, I think this is uh, I think this is the time. Um, I know it's not originally what everybody probably had planned, but Cold War has become a legendary staple in Call of Duty for many reasons. Uh, even given where it started and where it went and how it was. But uh, yeah, I'd be definitely down to do those Easter eggs, man. I'm not gonna lie, I, I I would be interested. I if I had to make a prediction of what the permanent thing is, I'd like to say that you'd spawn in with your primary weapon pack a bunch. If I had to make a guess, yeah, I, it's probably gonna be something like that. Yeah. Either that or maybe like. Hmm. I I, I, you really I think it would be. I was gonna say maybe like. I don't think they would do this. But I was going to say maybe like you spawn in with like Perkaholic at the start of the game, but I think that would be really overpowered. So I don't know. Yeah, it's something. Yeah, because I was, I was thinking about what this permanent unlock is going to be. I, I think it's going to be a pack a punch one version of your primary weapon. It, it, it that probably, would be pretty cool. It would make sense and it would be pretty fucking cool. And it would save you, what, 5000 points? I know yeah. he's in Vanguard the 7500, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to see uh, what that turns into. And I, I hope there's like some story implications with uh, with this Easter egg as well. I'm sure there will be, but. It's really interesting knowing, I mean, like, yeah, I know. Uh, I, I know Vanguard underperformed with zombies. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, Treyarch <laughs> had, the, had a, a lot of stuff going on. But uh, at least they're turning that around now because it's obviously Vanguard is going to have season two. So that means they're going to turn around right at the pivotal point where they can keep putting round survival maps in. Maybe they'll do more objective based things for the maps that are currently done with that. But 
No, they said they're not. They said they are not updating the objective base mode at all anymore. They said sacrifice is the last objective they're adding. I'm sure they'll like patch any glitches and stuff they find, but in terms of adding new content to those maps other than the new weapons, then I don't think that's the case. Okay. They came well, out and said that in their blog post when they announced the round based stuff. Well, you know, at least in theory, this is like a return to form for a lot of people. So I think it's going to really work out very well. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of people are really high on Vanguard because of how disappointing the zombies was compared to Cold War. But I mean, like, you know, given what the fuck Trick was dealing with, I mean, at least they had something in it. Um, and moving forward, now that you have round survival being implemented, which was not the plan, that means you're probably going to see a lot of ideas thrown into these reborn maps. Um, you're probably going to see all the classic four maps at least maybe remastered in the Vanguard before the next Black Ops game comes out or Zombie Chronicles 2. But I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I think people should just give them a chance because, like, I mean, for real, Treyarch is like saving COD at this point. So I think they deserve a pass for Vanguard not being as good as it could have been with zombies. But yeah. We'll definitely see what happens. Yeah. I mean, speaking of things that we've been playing, uh, I've actually been playing uh, quite quite a bit of Vanguard Zombies since the, since the last podcast. Um, I did quite a bit of grinding over the, the Easter weekend. They had max XP going. So, and even with double XP, man, like if you're not partied up with somebody and like getting all of those like XP and weapon XP bonuses, man is that shit still a grind even with double xp and double weapon xp like the actual like your actual account leveling isn't that bad but god damn the weapon leveling is so slow like if i had to guess i probably put in a solid like i don't know how many hours i played over the weekend but pretty much any time i had free time um Good. I was playing Vanguard Zombies over the weekend until they turned off the XP on Monday morning. So, and in that entire weekend, I was able to level up two guns to max rank. And one of them, I already started at level like 50. Yeah. So I got from 50 to 70 on one gun and from level like 10 to 70 on another one. And that was it. Yeah, I got a... I think the... I think the recent gun I've been working on is the Ammo Grand, I think. I think. Uh, but regardless, it is at rank 45. Nice. I've been hitting guns. Um, a lot of my friends have been asking me to play Vanguard. And I'm like, I'm like, why? Because I'm already max prestige. I, I don't have anything to prove. Um, but yeah. My one friend was like, hey, you want to do zombies? Let's do it. And I'm like, all right, yeah, you know what? Why not? Let's do it. Um, so that's how I got up to that rank. But oh, there goes a police officer. But <laughs> it's just another day in Hazleton. I'm sure yep. there's a lot of sirens following that. So I, primarily for me and Vanguard, like I love Vanguard. Don't get me wrong. I love Vanguard. It's just um, the zombies, I think, is going to get a lot better once we hit season four. Um, I still haven't finished the campaign because I've been so busy with a bunch of other bullshit and um, I forgot about it, but it's a really good campaign. You guys should probably definitely play it, especially if you like history like I do. But yeah, I got to replay through the campaign because just those miscellaneous campaign trophies is the only thing I'm missing for the Vanguard Platinum. So I'm oh. like 88% of the trophies. So I got to go back and finish that. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like constantly getting into that whole, um, that whole groove, but yeah it's uh it's a bit of a struggle trying to balance things um because i'm mainly just geared into the season uh seeing how we're gonna have a lot of double xp well weapon xp tokens it seems like they shower you more with it it's like they want you to max every weapon they just shower you with these tokens so God only knows I might end up maxing every weapon in Vanguard. I, I, I That's what I'm trying to do lot. right now, because I want to get the whatever the hell, the dark ether camo or whatever the hell it's called for yeah. unlocking all the gold camos. That's I always do that in zombies. I've done it 
well, I mean, technically Black Ops 3 didn't have dark like a dark matter camo in zombies, but um, I got all the zombies camos in Black Ops 3, in Black Ops 4, in Cold War, and now I'm working on it for Vanguard. Hopefully round based will make that easier. Hopefully they will adjust the weapon le like the weapon leveling accordingly so that it works better in round based, but um cuz yeah, in this objective mode it's just such a grind. Um and not in not in a good way. Um but yeah, I'm excited and that was a part a partially another reason why I got back into Vanguard was it was one that I wanted to you know, hit max prestige for the season and stuff, and that and finish the battle pass. But it's also like, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the objective zombies mode, especially playing solo, like it it gets very boring to me um, on solo, especially. I'm like, okay, it's it's the time to get back into it to try to get myself rolling on on weapon leveling and stuff, so that I can hit the ground running when uh, Shinonuma comes out on in season four. But the other game I've been playing, GP, <laughs> and uh, I've I got back into Fortnite again. <laughs> so, well, so okay. So the, the main question I have right now, because it's only what I've gathered from what's been in front of me. So, are you a builder? Or are you a non-builder? I have been playing the zero build mode because I suck ass at building. And um, well, they I, did that. I was really wonder if they would ever do something. I'm like, well, I really cool. hope it sticks around like forever going forward, because not to brag or anything, but like I'm really fucking good at the zero build mode. <laughs> but when it comes to building, I just I can't keep up. Yeah, so I, I hope they keep that around permanently. Hopefully they keep it around permanently. I think they're going to keep it permanently. Just I, I think they should. It's making them money. They yeah, yeah. That's some that's making them money. I mean, on, honestly, I would have not gone back to Fortnite had they not introduced this mode. But the thing that the other thing that's keeping me into Fortnite this time, like I know I said months ago when the new season started and they added Spider Man and everything, I was like, oh, I'm gonna grind to get Spider Man. I never did, but um, this season I actually have a crew playing with me as before I was playing solo only. So my friends Mark and Hannah are playing Fortnite with me. We we've been playing the last like three nights together and we've caught we've caught a couple of a couple of wins gp like i think i'm up to like seven or eight wins so far this season and literally we literally have only been playing for like three days so i was wondering actually what happened to hannah because the last time i was playing with her was uh was cold war actually yeah prior uh, i think right around firebase z i think firebase z was out uh firebase. somewhere right around there yeah was mark there too i can't remember no, no yeah. Mark doesn't. Mark doesn't really play Call of Duty anymore. Damn, Mark from Bio. Hell yeah, Mark from COD. But, but yeah, shout outs to them. That's that's my designated Fortnite crew now. But uh, that's cool. Well, I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you have a crew. That's always good. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I despise Battle Royale and everything it stands for. But that's cool. <laughs> at least, uh, hey, at least you're happy with it. You yeah, know? that's all it's about. I usually hate battle uh, battle royale games too, but I don't know Fortnite. Fortnite it it, the, it bit me, so we'll see how long I stick with it. Um, I think again having people to play with is going to make me stick with it a lot longer than I did last season. So we'll see. But yeah, I bought the battle pass. There's another Marvel skin at the end. It's not as cool as Spider Man. Like Spider Man's my personal all time favorite superhero, but the Marvel skin at the end of this season's battle pass is Doctor Strange because the new movie coming out so oh yeah oh yeah you're fucking right my friends were talking about that the other day and i was sitting there like what <laughs> but yeah there's a doctor strange one yeah that's i think that's next week already next thursday no not yet yeah so not this coming thursday but the thursday after i'm excited for that but jp let's get in to the news for this week, there are, let's see, seven news stories, and we're going to start off with the what I deem is the biggest one, and that is somehow Amy Hennig has returned to Star Wars. This is by Michael McWhorter over at Polygon. Lucasfilm Games and Skydance New Media announced new cinematic action adventure game in the Star Wars universe. A new Star Wars game is in development at Skydance New Media, the interactive studio founded in 2019 by game director Amy Hennig. Lucasfilm Games and Skydance Sky announced on Tuesday. 
It's a return to the Star Wars franchise for Hennig, who had previously worked with the with the franchise at EA's Visceral Games on an ambitious but untimely cancelled project set in a galaxy far, far away. Skydance New Media describes its untitled Star Wars project as, quote, richly cinematic action-adventure game featuring an original story, end quote, but did not reveal specifics. No title, no release date, or platforms were announced. Quote, I've often described how seeing Star Wars in 1977 essentially rewired my 12-year-old brain, shaping my creative life and future indelibly. End quote. Hennig said in a news release, quote, I'm elated to be working with Lucasfilm Games again to tell the interactive stories in this galaxy that I love. End quote. Hennig co-founded Skydance New Media, a division of the production company best known for its work in film and television, with Julian Beek, a veteran of EA whose credits include Battlefield Hardline, Need for Speed, and Visceral Star Wars game. When the studio was revealed, it said it hoped to, quote, reach gamers and non-gamers alike on emerging streaming platforms, end quote, with, quote, new story-focused interactive series that will employ state-of-the-art computer graphics to provide the visual fidelity of film and television, but with an active lean-in experience that puts the audience in the driver's seat, end quote. According to Tuesday's news release, Skydance New Media has since grown to include developers and artists with decades of AAA experience in action-adventure games, as well as a diverse team of creative consultants from the worlds of film, television, games, and comics. Skydance New Media announced its first project, an untitled Marvel game, last fall. Hennig and team described the project as a narrative-driven blockbuster action-adventure game featuring a completely original story and take on the Marvel Universe. Hennig's untitled Star Wars game joins at least five others in development with Lucasfilm Games. These projects include Quantic Dream Star Wars Eclipse, an open-world Star Wars adventure from Ubisoft Massive Entertainment, and three games from Respawn Entertainment, a sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, a new first-person shooter, and a strategy game co-developed with Bit Reactor, a studio founded by former XCOM developers. So, JP, very interesting. Very interesting. The Star Wars thing kind of has me a little interested in uh, what could possibly happen. Uh, so if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure the game that she was working on previously that got canceled was that Star Wars 1313 game, which essentially was meant to be basically gameplay wise, at least it was meant to be like an uncharted game, but just set in the Star Wars universe. You're going to be playing as a bounty hunter. So and then that got canceled. So I'm very interested to see that she's working with Star Wars again after that happened. Um Although, from what I remember, I don't really think it was Star Wars, like, it wasn't Disney and Lucasfilm's fault that it got canceled, if I remember correctly, because that was under Visceral, which I think was owned by EA at the time, or still is, uh, but I think they closed the studio down, if I remember, so. Oh, okay. Very interesting, GP, like you said, you're interested in this, I'm also interested in this. I, I wonder if it could be like a new take on the Star Wars 1313 idea where it ends up being like an uncharted like game because if if you didn't know for anyone who doesn't know Amy Hennig basically was the creative director of the first couple uncharted games um she definitely was for the first one and then I think two and then I don't remember about three and I know she wasn't for four I, I think she was for three the creative director and then four she was and then she left Naughty Dog and then um, Bruce Straley and what's the other guy's name? Neil Druckmann took over for Uncharted 4. And then they kind of changed some things around, rewrote the script a little bit um, before Uncharted 4 came out, which is why it got delayed a couple times. But so she's probably most well known for being like the the godmother of the Uncharted games in a way. So I wonder if this is going to take inspiration from the gameplay of Uncharted or if it's going to be something completely different. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. But I mean, I'm a, I'm a sucker for good Star Wars games. I mean, I talked the last two or three weeks on the podcast about how I've been obsessed with Lego Star Wars. And I, to be uh, fair, I've still been playing it. I've still been playing it. I just didn't want to mention it a third time in a row. But I'm a sucker for a good Star Wars game. Okay, so quick. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> at least you're going for it. Hell yeah. But um, like I said, there's. it seems like there is a ton of Star Wars games on the horizon. The only thing I worry about is I hope they don't oversaturate the market like they did with the movies. Um, but we'll see. 
I know there's, I mean, on top of all the stuff that we mentioned already, there's also the Knights of the Old Republic rem remake that's coming out at some point. So definitely a lot of different things for Star Wars fans to enjoy. I, like I said, I just hope they don't overdo it because that would be disappointing if they if they overdid it and oversaturated the market. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. Definitely interesting. You have any other thoughts on this uh, new Star Wars game, GP? I mean, hey, hopefully it works out for everybody. <laughs> or at least at least for a good chunk of the audience, that'd be great. You know, hopefully it works out. Be cool to see more of it. Um, Personally, I'd like to see an actual Battlefront 3, like the real Battlefront 3. Um, but, you know, we could always see what happens in the future. Yeah. Ugh. I'm I'm interested to see. I mean, they mentioned it there. Uh, rep or not Remedy. Hang on. Respawn, the people behind Apex Legends and Titanfall are working on a Star Wars first person shooter. And I think that could be like a spiritual successor to the Battlefront of old. I just I think just because of the bad marketing that Battlefront 2 had when it came out, I think they're probably going to steer clear of using the Battlefront name, which sucks. Um, but I do think it would be kind of like a spiritual successor to a Battlefront of old. So we'll see. But let's see, where do I want to go next? Let's go to Nintendo. Nintendo hit with a labor complaint, fired worker alleges union intimidation. Nintendo and staffing agency Aston Carter named an NLRB complaint. This is by Nicole Carpenter over at Polygon. A worker has accused Nintendo and staffing agency Aston Carter of violating the National Labor Relations Act, according to a National Labor Relations Board docket published Monday. Axios first reported the complaint. Under the National Labor Relations Act, workers are protected by law in their right to form a union and self-organize. The complaint filed Monday in Washington names both Nintendo and Aston Carter, a staffing agency Nintendo apparently uses to hire workers in contract positions. The unnamed worker alleges that Nintendo and Aston Carter engaged in, quote, concerted activities like retaliation towards firing, refusing to hire, or disciplining organized workers. Coercive actions like surveillance of those workers and coercive statements such as threats or promises of benefits, the National Labor Relations Act of 1935 is meant to protect workers from unfair labor practices related to the organization efforts. The lawsuit filed on Monday, details in included in this document were not immediately available to the public, just the public docket. A Nintendo representative addressed the NLRB complaint in a statement emailed to Polygon. Quote, we are aware of the claim which was filed with the National Labor Relations Board by a contractor who was previously terminated for the disclosure of confidential information and for no other reason. Nintendo was not aware of any attempts to unionize or related activities and intends to cooperate with the investigation conducted by the NLRB. Nintendo is fully committed to providing a welcoming and supportive work environment for all our employees and contractors. We take matters of employment very seriously, end quote. Nintendo of America is located in Redmond, Washington, and is a subsidiary of Japanese company Nintendo. Nintendo as a whole has 27 subsidiaries and more than 6,500 employees, according to the, a corporate responsibility report published in 2021. Like other companies, Nintendo sometimes relies on contract labor for certain development positions. And then it goes on to just... Oh, wait, there's an update here. The National Labor Relations Board released a redacted version of the Nintendo... Of the Aston Carter and Nintendo of America workers filed charge, including following a Freedom of Information Act requested filed by Polygon. In these documents, the unnamed worker alleged that they were, quote, discharged or fired after, after the worker joined or supported a labor organization. The worker alleges that the firing was completed in order to discourage union activities and or membership. The worker also alleged that they were fired for engaging in protected activities like sharing wages and other terms and conditions of employment. They also said that Nintendo and Aston Carter engaged in surveillance or created the impression of surveillance of employee union activities. These accusations will be investigated by the National Labor Relations Board. So, JP, well, what uh, do you think of all this? Do you well, think this guy is bullshitting because he got fired and he's mad about it, or... Do you think this is just another um, example of union busting in the games industry? Oh, I feel like it's a little bit of both. Um, see, the, it's it's interesting now, and I 
I understand the concept more now with my new field of work since I primarily deal with life insurance for unions and groups. Um, so realistically, you know, I know a lot of people want a union bus because once you're in the union, they will do whatever they have to. Um, which really, that's how it should be at a job. You know, you think these people would go the bat at for you. That's not, that's not how it is. You know, I'm, I've been learning a lot about unions and groups and yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite interesting. It really is, you know, um, I don't know. I, I really think a lot of places just become a union because you can do whatever the hell you want. Um, you have the heads and the presidents and everything of the union that can press whatever the hell you want. Uh, that's, that's personally how I offer great benefits to members that, that sign up for life insurance. Um, but yeah, it's a very interesting time. Really it is. Um, I think everything's eventually going to become unionized for the most part because the higher branches of the main people that have them don't want to do it. And the union will buy out their contracts. So it's, it's very interesting. Um, in this case, maybe in the future, I might be working with people from these development plants or wherever they're at, you know? So I think it's something that they should really think about. Um, it's definitely the future. I'd say probably unionizing because they're kind of just tired of being fucked over. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just have to see where everything goes. Uh, anything's possible at this point. I mean, it, it can go either way, but I really think um, I really think the union way is the way, just because they will do anything for their members. Yeah, a lot to see. Yeah, yeah. and I I hope this is um, just another step in the. Um, what am I trying to say? I hope this is just another step towards the industry as a whole becoming unionized because I mean, we've talked about it many times between this podcast and our old podcast, pizza and pixels. There's so many shitty things that happen in the game industry between sexual harassment and, you know, the mistreatment of minorities and women and all this stuff. And then on top of that, you know, the crunch of, you know, working on these triple a games and hitting deadlines and, all this stuff. So I think this is yet just another um, stepping stone towards hopefully the whole industry becoming unionized. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, in terms of my opinion, like kind of like what you said, I think this is a little bit of both of um, that. You know, this guy probably what is just saying this because he got fired. But I also think that Nintendo probably would be union busting like not to say that Nintendo's the bad guy here I think that's just I think most studios probably do union bust if there is a group of people that try to um, unionize and I, yep. so I don't know I mean it's it's shitty but that's just how the games industry has been for the last what 40 years and I do hope it changes but we'll see but speaking of unionization JP Activision QA workers win NLRB ruling, vote on union in April. Activision Blizzard is reviewing legal options regarding a potential appeal. This is by Nicole Carpenter over at Polygon. Raven Software's quality assurance employees will vote as a 21-person unit on whether to unionize the National Labor Relations Board ruled on Friday. The decision comes after Raven's owner, Activision Blizzard, challenged organization efforts and sought to make the entire 230-person studio vote on the union. All eligible Raven Software QA workers will be mailed ballots on April 29th, and the ballots will be counted on May 23rd, the NLRB said. Should a supermajority of eligible workers vote yes, their union called Game Workers Alliance will move into contract negotiations with Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard and Raven Software QA workers have been awaiting a decision from the NLRB since a hearing in February. In testimony during that hearing, Raven Software management and workers were questioned on the studio's restructuring in January as it applied to union-eligible workers. An Activision spokesperson told Polygon the company will, re will review its options regarding a potential appeal. The full statement is as follows. While we respect the NLRB process, we are disappointed that, the, that a decision could 
that could significantly impact the future of our entire studio will be made by fewer than 10% of its employees. We believe a direct relationship with team members is the best path to achieving individual and company goals. We are reviewing legal options regarding a potential appeal. On social media, Raven Software QA workers expressed excitement over the OK vo to vote. The group thanked supporters in a Twitter message. Quote, we are so proud to announce that the NLRB ruled that our unit is eligible for election, the group wrote. Quote, thank you to everyone supporting our campaign since the initial strike up until this very moment. Time for democracy. Raven Software's union push in partnership with the Communication Workers of America kicked off in January following, following an employee walkout after a group of Raven Software contract workers were told they would not be among the 500 employees converted to full-time positions last year. The NLRB hearing regarding the union's scope began shortly after Activision Blizzard refused to voluntarily recognize the group. Then it goes on to say about uh, since then, it's an Activision Blizzard announced its intention to convert another 1,000 QA workers to full-time positions, increasing their pay to $20 per hour and allowing QA worker accesses to bonuses and benefits, which is a story that we read on the show a couple weeks ago, if I remember correctly. But I think so. JP, both good news and some bad news, I guess. Uh, good news, obviously, that the the National Labor Relations Board is saying that this group is a okay to go ahead and vote on union unionization for themselves. This group of QA workers, and of course, the bad news in the fact that Activision is still trying to bust this union by looking for a, a court appeal to try to take this back to court. So, what are your thoughts, JP? Well, well, realistically, as a uh, as an insurance broker for a union, I'd like to say that'd be really cool if they did that. I think that'd be really cool to work with people that have these huge jobs outside of like police, firefighters, pipeline workers, teachers, all that stuff. Um, I think it'd be cool to have a new clientele. I think it'd be really cool to work with people that are with Activision and other big ass companies. Um, I, I think there's a lot of money there and there's a lot of democracy and freedom. Um, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I think eventually everything for the most part is going to become a union because a lot of people are starting to wake up and realizing that their company isn't looking out for the best of their interests and that there's other countries, well, not countries. There's other, there probably is other countries, but there's other companies that could, realistically supplement them better than their own company and take care of them. Um, and now the thing is the company loses control. Yeah. So, so it's uh, kind of going to come down the egos if I, if I had to guess, <laughs> but realistically, um, I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 I just from practicing life insurance and working with a union group based company, I got to say the benefits are way better than you could ever imagine for life insurance. I don't know about health insurance. I can technically practice that, but I don't work with a company that does it. Um, now at the union with life insurance, you get a lot of really good deals. You really do. You get it for about a quarter of the less the cost of the market as one of the fastest payouts. They're talking three to five days. Um, you do have a lot of advantages in being in a union, uh, not, not to stir up any political controversy. It's just, you have a lot of benefits of being in a union in terms of when it comes down to your insurance policies and how everything's enacted. Now, um, the companies are losing control. I'm sure it's going to come down to uh, one hell of a battle for them to, to maintain it. But, you know, if you have people that agree to a union, you can't stop them. That's just like Amazon in New York City. New York State, Amazon is now a union. Um, Jeff Bezos doesn't like that, but he could really fuck off for all I care. Uh, good point, good point. I like Amazon, but he could fuck off. If they ever want to apply with me, fuck it. I'll set you up with it. You don't have to even ask. I'll just sit you right down and we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, it's definitely an interesting turn for the industry. I, it's something that I thought would definitely happen sooner, really, because gaming is more of a democracy, democratic thing. Um, it's kind of like Hollywood. Hollywood is democratic. Music is democratic. A lot of 
artistic creativity endeavors are democratic democracy based supplements and i i feel like gaming is getting ready to join those other things i i i really do um and if i ever came across someone that worked for activision i think that would be really really fucking cool but you know future holds all the answers to that one <laughs> yeah <clears throat> But JP, speaking of Activision, we got two other stories about Call of Duty specifically. Oh boy. First King one, Kong. Call of Duty Warzone getting Godzilla versus King Kong crossover. Uh, this is by Matt Leon over at Polygon. While leaks have pointed to this for the past couple of months, on Thursday, Activision made it official. Godzilla vs. King Kong is heading to Call of Duty Warzone. Specifically, a crossover with the with the film, which is a bit unusual considering the movie was released over a year ago, but the announcement trailer features enough high-end CG to make that easy to forget. We don't know much about how the crossover, titled Operation Monarch, will work just yet. The trailer shows the two beasts fighting against one another, which suggests that we may see a similar storyline to the movie, rather than a free-for-all that just happens to feature the characters. In a world overrun by Fortnite and Minecraft, crossovers might not be what they once were, but given Activision's tendency to stray from Call of Duty's grounded roots, it seems like there's a lot of potential for something that feels as much like the movie as it does the game. According to the trailer, the battle begins on May 11th. So, again, short snippet. We don't really know much about it, but they have shown off images of some of the um, skins you'll be able to buy in relation to the pack. The one thing I do find interesting, and I, I kind of understand why they're marketing it this way, but everything I've heard about it makes it seem like this is Warzone only and that it has nothing to do with Vanguard, so I'm not sure if you'll actually be able to use... It's any of the, these skins in Vanguard, which is uh, interesting. The skins that you use in Vanguard, everything else you can't. Uh, apparently, they were talking about it. Uh, the skins are in Vanguard. The rest of the whole Operation Monarch is in Warzone. Um, I will admit, from seeing the trailer, I thought it was really entertaining. Um, it was something that I never thought I'd see COD doing, but... You know, when you're in an era where you got to make branding deals, you know, that's that's how it goes. Um, that's why I think you're going to see more branding deals from Vanguard and COD. Um, that's yeah. why I think probably probably in October for Halloween, I think you will see Michael Myers. Um, I think you will probably see Jake Saw. It really just depends. Uh, there's a lot of things that they can do, but they have options. Um, it's not that they don't. The, the whole the whole Godzilla King Kong thing is absolutely incredible. Um, I don't really even know how to go about it because, you know, you're talking King Kong of all people with Godzilla in Call of Duty. It just seems like something you never thought you'd see, but yeah, here we are. Um, so it's kind of like Captain America and Indiana Jones in July. Probably going to have some kind of, American Frontier update, I had to guess, because yeah. they're American heroes, but, or American heroes, maybe that'll be the fucking name, who the fuck knows. But yeah, <laughs> so the Call of Duty, you could definitely tell Call of Duty anymore is what in insurance we call an investment vehicle. Because you are taking your assets and your investments and you're putting it into one thing to then get something out of it down the line. Um, so I feel like they are now an investment vehicle. It's kind of strange knowing how my professions are now intertwined. It's kind of strange. Yeah. But yeah, so let's we'll see what happens. Um, so what did you think of the of the whole... Did you see the trailer with Godzilla and King Kong? I did, yes. Exactly. Uh, it looks really cool. I mean, not to reiterate what you said, but like, I also agree with the sentiment that it is cool to see like Call of Duty. I feel like it uh, up until pretty recently. I mean, not always, but I feel like sometimes it definitely took itself too seriously. There was like cracks in that foundation every now and then. But for the most part, I feel like it really took itself too seriously sometimes. And I, I like that we're trying that we're that we're realizing, hey, it's a video game. Like we're starting to lax that a little bit. Um the idea sounds cool. I mean, I don't play Warzone, so unfortunately, like, I'm sure I'll see, like, stories from it and videos from it, but I'm probably not going to play it. Um, uh, yeah, it's in me. I'm not going to play it exactly. Um, 
I kind of wish they would. I mean, they could still do this, but kind of like Krampus, it'd be cool if they put them in modes in Vanguard. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they're going to do that, though, because I know the Krampus thing really pissed a lot of people off. But it was pretty cool being hunted by Krampus. I mean, we can't all deny that. That was something really, really crazy that I never thought I experienced in a video game. And to see him next to me and fuck me up and throw me across the map, I was like, wow, that was something. But King Kong or Godzilla, I mean, I think they're going to have something in the game that is going to put them into the maps. Um, It would be cool if, like... <sighs> I think they're going to like actually scale them up and make them huge. But like, it would be cool if in some of the maps, you could just like see them off in the distance fighting or some shit, like even just a small detail like that on Vanguard. But what I think I, I'm interested to see how they handle it in Warzone. I think it would be kind of cool if it was like similar to origins where like they're just fucking walking around the map. And sometimes you could just get fucking stomped on out of nowhere and shit. So like, you would really have to, watch where you're like where you're stepping and watch where you're dropping watch for the big footprints and stuff i think that'd be kind of cool but we'll see but speaking of brand deals and call of duty jp snoop dog comes to call of duty with like a million weed references Our this boy. is why this and is by it didn't happen on 420 man how about yeah, yeah, it happened on 419 for some reason but but yes <laughs> This is by Michael McWhorter over at Polygon. Operator bundle goes live just in time for 420. Uh, rapper and marijuana enjoyer Snoop Dogg joins Call of Duty Vanguard and Call of Duty Warzone today on this 420 Eve, letting players shoot it out and smoke it up as the dog father if they're willing to pay the cost to beat a boss, that is. Call of Duty's new tracer pack, the Snoop Dogg Operator Bundle, brings the man lesser known as Calvin Broadus Jr. to both Vanguard and Warzone as a new operator. The new Snop Snoop Dogg operator comes with its own voice lines and progression path through which players can unlock several XP and PPSH 41 weapon XP rewards, as well as two sprays, two operator quips, a calling card, a sticker, an emblem, a weapon charm, a Vanguard exclusive kill cam vanity, and four alternate operator outfits. Two of these threads, the gold trimmed VIP and the iced out diamond, the dog father are unlocked at max level 20. More importantly, for the Call of Duty fans who like a good weed reference, Snoop Dogg and his operator bundle are positively sticky with allusions to the fact that the rapper frequently partakes. Snoop has a weapon blueprint known as the Bong Ripper Sniper Rifle, a weed-covered gun with nugs in the magazine, as well as an assault rifle called West Coast Bling and an SMG called the Shiznit. Every weapon comes with green weed tracer rounds, and their muzzle flashes even look like a green pot leaf. <laughs> Snoop's spray, charm, and emblem are similar pot leaf uh, referential, plus he's hitting and sharing a blunt in his highlight intro, MVP highlight, and f finish izzle, move izzle, finishing move. Absolutely nothing is safe from weed references when Snoop's in the house. Then it says the Snoop Dogg Operator Bundle will set players back 2,400 COD points, which costs $19.99 in real-life money. So, GP, have you... Have you seen this in game yet? I know you haven't been playing a ton of COD recently, but have you seen this in game yet? And are you going to buy it? Hmm. Well, I haven't seen it in game yet, obviously, because there's no point to play right now. I'm back at Procedure 11. So, um, realistically, <clears throat> I'd say. Would would I buy the pack? I contemplated it. They contemplated it. Um, I don't think I'm going to buy the pack just because I don't see Vanguard as a long-lasting COD game. Now, yeah. if he was in Cold War, I'd buy him. Um, Vanguard, I like. I love Vanguard. It's just I don't think it's as good as Cold War remotely. Um <laughs> So that's mainly the reason why I would not buy him. Yeah. Could I afford it? Yeah. Do I want to buy him? No, because if I bought him, I don't think I'd be really using him that often. That's the worst part about it. Um, so I'm glad they did it with Snoop Dogg. Like Snoop Dogg's been fucking everywhere, commercials and all. So, um, 
in terms of in, in terms of his impact, I should say it's insurmountable. It's just I don't know if I really want to buy that pack. How about you? Um, I I did buy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had. Uh, I'm glad you bought it. Yeah, it's. it's I had I had awesome. some COD points on my account from grinding through the battle pass and everything, so. I didn't actually have to spend any money on it, so I was like, ah, fuck it, whatever. But yeah, I've been I've been enjoying it. Um, he has some pretty funny voice lines in zombies. I haven't played multiplayer yet, so I don't know what yeah, they're like I there. Was, but. I was curious about what his zombie lines would be. So so tell me, what is his zombie lines? Why what, you? What what are some good takeaways? Oh man, um. I don't remember exactly what he says, but I know he like comments on the taste of all the perks. Like I know he he's I remember him saying something about quick revive tasting like shit, something like that. Um, fuck, I'm trying to think I'm drawing a blank, but. I know he'll be like, oh, fuck, I don't remember exactly what the one line was, but he's like. He's, he says something along the lines of like, good thing you're already dead, motherfucker, or something like that. And just like shit like that. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I hope in sacrifice when they're cap and B, he goes, "Hey, yo, dog, they cap and B." <laughs> hey, yo, I dog, they cap and B. I think they should. If they did not resalvage those lines, they are so fucked. That I hope they good. do. Hey, yo, dog, they <laughs> cap and B. <laughs> I just remember that fucking commercial, and I was like, "Wow, I didn't buy that pack either." Just because Ghost had its own problems, but. Yeah. I was, it was really cool knowing they thought about Snoop Dogg and the drill sergeant from Heavy Metal Jacket. It was really cool. Um, you know, if any way in the future somehow I was able to be in Call of Duty, I think that would be one hell of a fucking pack because I'd be down to record hours of fucking tunes. I know Ghostface to this point, I think, is the most downloaded and worked on operator because he has like two hours worth of lines. Um, but who knows? You know that could change if Jigsaw comes in in October. I think Tobin Bell will be willing to sit down and do many hours of vocal lines. Obviously, Michael Myers wouldn't do a damn thing because he doesn't talk. But you know, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to see. Yeah, but yeah, um, I'm glad. I'm glad Snoop Dogg's in Call of Duty. I really am. It brings, it brings more impact to the product. It brings PR. Um, obviously, they're letting him do what he wants with the blunt smoking. Yeah. A lot of people somehow were offended when he was sitting there smoking a blunt. Um, and the only reason or question and answer I'd have, primarily an answer, would be. It's 2022. Lay the fuck off. Like, yeah, people are going to smoke weed. It's it's fully legal in half the United States. It's going to be legal probably in the next two or three years fully in every state. So it's something that people should wake up on. Um, and knowing that it's not going to harm people as much as alcohol. Um I like to drink and I like to smoke. I'll be fully honest with you. I will admit it on this podcast. But if I had to really think where they're going with everything, I think it's realistically trying to help people and not stray them from the path, but rather help them out if they need something. You have Snoop Dogg. Yeah, you have Snoop Dogg there. I mean, hell, even before the Snooper Bowl, well, the, the Snooper Bowl, that would have been something if it was called the Snooper Bowl. But before... <laughs> You know what? I think the NFL needs to do the Snooper Bowl. I think that'd be something you could have. That's what they should have called the halftime show, the Snooper Bowl. You could have had the weed contest, people just huffing it. That that would have been something. But, you know, in terms of like marijuana being recognized as a rehabilitator, a medical necessary, a plant. Yeah, I know opiates are a plant too, but, you know, you know, in the in the age that we're in, I think this is like the perfect collab. Um, the only thing that I'm waiting for is to see Snoop Dogg and Eminem in Grand Theft Auto, which I think is probably going to happen because they're tight with Dr. Dre. But time will tell. It's possible. It always is. Um, yep. Yeah. It's quite interesting. All right, GP. Two more news stories. So. This one is some finally some updates on what's happening with Marvel's Avengers. And this one, 
I know you're not big into Avengers, so I'll, I'll explain what's happening to you. And I just think it's very interesting. So the headline reads, Jane Foster, the mighty Thor, is coming to Marvel's Avengers. Give the Odinson a break. The new Thor Love and Thunder trailer isn't the only place you'll find Jane Foster rocking the power of Thor. In what's surely part of a massive promotional push, Jane Foster, the mighty Thor, will be the next playable hero in, to join the roster in Marvel's Avengers, the action RPG from Crystal Dynamics. The news comes via an April development update, mostly focused on the forthcoming uh, 2.4 update for the game, which will overhaul the way Avengers handle, handles recurring in-game events. However, in a final note, looking forward to update 2.5, the developers mentioned the first few details about the addition of Jane Foster as Thor. Well, we'll be coming back with specifics on timing later. We can share the... It will introduce a new playable hero for all platforms, Jane Foster, the mighty Thor. Our hero designs are driven first and foremost by their core comic book identities, so as a fellow wielder of Mjolnir, her suite of abilities will have a lot in common with the Odinsons. However, she will also have elements that are distinctly Jane. More details on how Jane will come to life in our game will be coming in the future. The Mighty Thor will be the first new playable character added since Spider-Man was introduced for PlayStation players at the end of last year and the first new character for all since Black Panther in the War for Wakanda expansion last summer. So, JP. Essentially, uh, Jane Foster is in the comics and also in the MCU, is a love interest of Thor's who is human, who eventually she gets the the power of Thor so she can wield the hammer. She can, you know, do all the electricity stuff. But the thing that's interesting to me that I think Marvel's Avengers struggles with and has struggled with so far is introducing characters that are very similar to one another. Yeah. So that's something I noticed. So in the base game, there was six heroes. So far, Jane Foster will be the what? I mean, one, two, three, four, fifth DLC hero. Four if you count. Don't count Spider Man because he was PlayStation exclusive. <laughs> but so since they started putting out DLCs, they've had two different versions of Hawkeye. One as Clint Barton and the other is Kate Bishop, both named Hawkeye, both with very similar abilities. They both shoot bows, bow and arrows, very similar abilities. Then there was Black Panther, who is, I mean, he's Black Panther. I mean, he has a similar power set to Captain America, kind of. He doesn't have a shield, but I mean, he plays somewhat similarly to Captain America. Uh, Spider-Man, who, I mean, it's Spider-Man. He, he plays like Spider-Man, so he was pretty unique, but again, only available to PlayStation players. And now we're getting Jane Foster as Thor. So basically a reskin of Thor. So that means there's two already two versions of Hawkeye, and now there's going to be two versions of Thor. And for the longest time, the rumor was that the next character we would get would be She-Hulk, which would mean there would be two versions of the Hulk. And I don't understand what their motive is by doing this, but I would think with how repetitive the game already is that you would want to put heroes in that feel different as opposed to just putting in this. If She-Hulk comes to fruition, that'll be the third, like, reskin, basically, of the same character. And I don't understand why they're doing this. Like, I, I get it. It's for, for, like, Marvel's... Disney and Marvel must be forcing them to do it for promotional purposes because um, Clint Barton and Kate Bishop as Hawkeye made sense because they were working on the Hawkeye show for Disney Plus, which has yeah. both of those characters in it. Mm -hmm. Then the Black Panther one, I think, wasn't necessarily promotion because there wasn't anything Black Panther related coming out at the time. I think that one was one they actually wanted to work on um, that they kind of just that they actually had the choice to make. Um, Spider-Man was another one that was probably marketing for to build a pipe for No Way Home, I guess. Um, again, this one with Thor, Jane Foster as Thor. Again, seems like a marketing push because Thor Love and Thunder comes out in J June or July, I think. And then She-Hulk, there's supposed to be a She-Hulk show on Disney Plus coming at some point, so... Again, it seems like they're trying to use this game more for promotional purposes than for it to be an actual game, which does stink a little bit. Um, I do kind of wish that these developers would get the chance to 
make what they want because I feel like if they were able to make what they want, we wouldn't be getting so many reskins of similar characters. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because I feel like that definitely doesn't help this game situation. Like it almost feels like this game at this point is more of a what 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 was the thing you were you, what was the word you used an investment vehicle? Yes, it do. seems like it's basically that to sell M- MCU skins because they started selling MCU skins for all the heroes based on the different movies and TV shows, and it seems like literally the, all their objective is is to just sell M- MCU skins because there's like there's usually a new one like every week or every other week depending on f- like for different heroes and based on different movies and stuff. And they sell them for like 14 bucks a pop for one skin. So, and it's, they seems like they do relatively well from as, as far as I can tell from the people who are still playing that game. But I don't know. I just, I feel like it would definitely help alleviate some of the feeling of repetitiveness from the game. If they were actually able to make more unique heroes, but it seems like, Disney and Marvel, it seems to be forcing them to be making these heroes based on upcoming projects, which right now we're at a phase in the MCU where they're kind of phasing out the original cast of Avengers and bringing in new people to take over their spots. So like uh, eventually we're going to be getting an Ironheart show with who's going to be, she's like a spiritual successor to Iron Man and we're going to be getting a She-Hulk show and she's the spiritual successor to Hulk oh, and the She-Hulk show. Jane Foster as the spiritual successor yep. to Thor and it just like kind of keeps going like that. So I, I think um, we're probably going to see more reskinned characters at some point in this game, unfortunately, but I'm honestly kind of surprised we didn't get like Falcon as Captain America or um, something like that yet. But I'm sure there will be once Captain America 4 comes out, whenever the hell that happens. But if the game is even still alive by then, which I personally don't think that it will be. But yeah, I don't think it's going to be alive by then, personally. But what they did, uh, this is the same game that was like, hey, delete your safe, right? This is the same game. Yep, same game, same game. Yeah, I just leave your safe. Oh, good. They did fix that issue, yeah. though. So, oh, they fixed it. Wow, that's great. I'm glad they fixed that after their uh, impromptu <laughs> meeting. Hey, delete your save. Hey, oh, delete, your, delete your campaign save, and that's how you can play the game again. It's like, okay. Like but JP, bonkers. We're going to get into what is now a weekly tradition that I will try to upkeep every week. We're into our meme news story now, and this one gave me a good chuckle. So, the Minecraft movie, JP, will reportedly star Jason Momoa. Napoleon Dynamite's Jared Hess will direct. This is by Nicole Carpenter over at Polygon. Aquaman and Dune actor Jason Momoa will reportedly star in Warner Brothers' upcoming Minecraft movie, The Hollywood Reporter confirmed on Monday. Jared Hess, Napoleon Dynamite, has signed on as the new director. A Minecraft movie has been in the works since 2014. Some version of the movie was originally slated to premiere this year. It's a project that's changed hands multiple times. Hess is at least the fourth director attached to the film. Peter Sale, The Path, Rob McElhenney, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and Sean Levy, Free Guy, were were previously named in those roles. The Hollywood Reporter said Mary, Mary Parent, Dune and Roy Lee Death Note will produce, quote, with Jill Messick receiving a posthumous producing credit for developing the film before her death in 2018. In 2019, Minecraft developer Mo Yang said the movie will center on a teenage girl and her unlikely group of adventurers. After the malevolent Ender Dragon sets out on a path of destruction, they must save their beautifully blocky overworld. Steve Carell was reportedly tapped to star in 2016 too. Otherwise, the Minecraft movie remains a mystery. The popular block-based sandbox game was released in 2011 and has been wildly popular. In October, the game reportedly had more than 141 million monthly active users. Minecraft itself is simple and lets players build out their own stories, games, and worlds, all while taking on enemies that only come out at night. Polygon named it among the most influential games of the decade. So JP, it seems like the the current trend in the games industry is to get these uh, video game movies uh, with 
big name Hollywood actors in it that don't necessarily fit the role, but that they uh, they they basically wanted to sell on name power alone, which is part of the reason that the freaking Super Mario Brothers cast is so wild, like with friggin Chris Pratt and Anya Taylor Joy and Jack Black and all those people. So I think this is going to be a continuing trend in the industry going forward. Probably. It wouldn't surprise me because, you know, if it makes money, it's going to do it. Uh, money always rolls. Money always goes through. And if they want to do what they want to do, they're going to do it. Uh, so, you know, people from Hollywood and people that have done a lot of directing and stuff like that, just from knowing these people, you know, you kind of get a feel of what the system's kind of like that they deal with. And um, yeah, I think that's exactly what it's going to be like. I can't see why it wouldn't be anything different uh, because Hollywood has its own ties. Hollywood does what Hollywood wants and um, as much as many people want to try to like cut them down and stop them from doing what they're doing, it's not going to happen because it's Hollywood. It, yeah. It's a financial staple in the industry. So you can't just stop the vein of existence because then you're not going to be going to a movie on a Friday night. You're not going to be going to a movie probably for the next year at that point. Because if Hollywood shuts down, um, there's nothing left to be done. Now, I know in even like Pittsburgh, I know Netflix has a studio and stuff like that, but in terms of Hollywood, it's only in one spot of the United States and it's the Western hemisphere. And that is Hollywood, California. Um, Yeah. And Los Angeles. So yeah, it's very interesting, but I mean, that's just usually how it rolls, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I will say like, I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, Because given like, so if the people actually working on the movie are actually familiar with the source material, I think it could be actually really good. And I think the perfect example of that is the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, specifically Sonic 2, which I just saw a couple weeks ago. And it was honestly really freaking good. Like just as a children's movie, even if your child knows nothing about Sonic, I think it stands on its own very well. I think it's a great kids movie. And if you are familiar with Sonic, there's a lot of great references in there between like musical references, references to different levels from the games, um, character interactions, just so many different references to the games overall. And it's it's really, really, really good. Like, I love Sonic as a kid. I mean, he's had some he's had definitely a rocky, uh, (laughs) a rocky road the last uh pretty much ever since like the 2000s i would say like since his transition to 3d it's definitely been uh he's he's been rocky there's been good games there's been bad games there's been terrible games um and everything in between but this movie really is great and so like i think it proves that if you have people who are familiar with the source material and know what they're doing that they can make a fantastic movie and it it kind of is crazy to me that these people are seem so invested in the history of Sonic and it makes me it makes me like scratch my head to think how they because if you do you remember the the memed like Sonic movie design that came out before the first movie that they had to delay the movie to change yep <laughs> it makes it, 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 it's so crazy to me that how good these that. two movies are story wise and like reference wise to the games and then that was the design they went with like it was like they were they literally reference the game so much like it's so true to the games but then they 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 had that design to start with for some reason i don't understand how that happened but i'm glad that they fixed it and i mean even like with all of the hollywood actors in those movies like ben schwartz as sonic idris elba as knuckles freaking jim carrey as eggman um James (laughs) James <laughs> Marsden and stuff like there's so many great actors in those movies and they honestly all do a great job like you would think that Idris Elba would want nothing to do with playing a furry fucking red animal and he f- fucking kills it like he is so good Ben Schwartz is great as Sonic um, interestingly enough I thought it was actually really cool they got the voice actor from the video games to play Tails which she fits in perfectly <laughs> like are you serious yeah it was, it, it was oh, really great. good like i loved that oh, movie. That's, great, man. That, that, that's great 
The interesting thing that I, or the thing I'm interested to see when it comes to the Minecraft movie, though, is that Minecraft doesn't really have a story or, like, a main objective. So, I mean, it, it kind of does have an objective, I guess, but, like, which is to go into the Ender and defeat the Ender Dragon, which it seems like they're going with that because they said about the Ender Dragon going on a rampage, but it doesn't really have a story. Like, there's that Minecraft story mode from Telltale, but I don't know if that's, like, officially canon or not. Um... I don't know if it's going to take inspirations from that at all, but I mean, they definitely have their work cut out for them, I feel like, because it's not like there's a ton of stuff to be able to reference other than like enemies and like different locations and stuff, but we'll see. I'm interested to see what role Jason Momoa plays in the Minecraft movie, but Guys, this has been the Hex Phenom Games Cast, the show that brings you the video game news you need to know each and every week. It goes live every Saturday on YouTube.com slash HexPhenom and on podcast services around the globe. But until next time, guys, have a phenomenal week.